Story time, would you call this cheating? So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school, and I was dating this guy who we're gonna call Tom, right? When we started dating, everything was super good. But a little bit into our relationship, I started to get the ick. Anything and everything he would do would literally irritate the hell out of me. So at that point, I told him that we should take a break. So we did. Well, while we were on this little break, I decided to go out with my cousin the one night. And she had brought this guy who she was talking to at the time. We're going to call him Jake. Jake and I had the same classes in school, but we never really talked to each other. Well, I started to get to know him throughout the night, and I realized we had a lot in common. I felt like he was flirting with me, so I decided to flirt with him. When we got home, I had told her how much I really liked Jake. We ended up FaceTiming and falling asleep on the phone together. We all hung out again the next day, and I invited him back to my house. Like for part two. Would you consider this cheating part two? So like I said, we all decided to hang out again the next day. It was really cold out, so I invited everybody back to my house. And when we got back to my house, we were watching horror films. And I was cuddling next to Jake on the couch. And listen, I wanted to kiss him really bad, but Tom and I had just gotten done with our so-called break. So I decided to be loyal and not do that. Well, a few days after Jake and I talking, I realized that I wanted to be with him and not Tom. So I decided to end things with Tom. And now Jake and I have been together for a year and two months and we couldn't be happier. But every time that we bring up Tom, Jake always tells me that I cheated on him. Would you consider what I did cheating? Story time, I was the toxic best friend. So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And at the beginning of the year, I met this girl who we're going to call Riley. Riley and I hit it off straight away. Like a week after knowing each other, she knew everything about me and I knew everything about her. Well, then she tells me about this guy that she's talking to, who we're going to call Jay. She said that they would hook up sometimes and he would text her sometimes. But she said that I couldn't tell anybody because he said that it had to be a secret. So I tried telling her that he sounded like a fuckboy, but she decided she was going to do whatever she wanted. And I was like, okay. So fast forward to the end of the year, he adds me on Snapchat. Okay, don't get me wrong. He was really hot, but I had my own thing going on. So I really didn't pay that much attention to him. And I thought he maybe added me on Snapchat to be like, oh my God, I really like your best friend. And then I also was caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I tell my best friend that the guy that she likes just added me on Snapchat? Or do I lie to her? Well, I was going to tell her until I got a Snapchat from him, like for part two. Part two about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I didn't know whether I should tell her that he added me on Snapchat or if I should. And I was going to until I got a Snapchat from him saying, hey, you're really pretty. Um, I think we should talk sometime. So I ended up telling her about it because I felt really bad. And she was like, this is why I can't trust girls. Like, you need to unadd him right now. Like, fucking block him. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. Like, what the fuck? So whatever. I end up blocking him. It's fine. Until he texts me one day. And he's like, hey, it's Jay. Um, I think you blocked me on Snapchat, lol. And him and I had talked a little bit in school and I kind of started to like him. Well, fast forward, him and I ended up hooking up a few times. We were talking a lot and he hadn't been texting Riley as much. Well, the one night while I was sleeping over her house, my phone was going off a lot and I didn't think to delete any of the messages, like for part three. Part three about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I was sleeping over her house the one night, my phone was blowing up, and she knows my password and everything, and I stupidly did not delete the text messages between Jay and I. And I kid you not, I wake up to a slap across the face. It felt like she slapped me with her fist, and it looked like it too because I had a black eye. So I woke up and she's like, what the fuck? Like, I hate you so much. Like, why would you do this? And I look down and she has my phone right in her hand on the text messages with Jay. And I ended up feeling really bad because she started crying saying that like, I knew that she liked him a lot. And I also knew the reason why he wasn't texting her as much. Well, then she ran downstairs and she told her mom. And the next thing I know, I had her, her mom, and her three other sisters screaming at me. And then I got blocked by Jay because she wasn't supposed to know and she leaked his nudes. Story time about why I beat up my best friend. So a little background information. Her and I had been best friends since we were in seventh grade. Her family was rich, mine was poor. And at first she was a really good friend. She was always there for me whenever I needed her. Until our freshman year of high school. Which is when her and I started hanging out with boys. 
Now my mom was kind of strict. She wouldn't really let me hang out with boys, but her mom was more lenient about her hanging out with boys. Every weekend she would throw a party at her house and she would throw them in her attic because one, it was huge and two, her parents didn't give a fuck what she did up there. Anyways, she would always offer to do my hair and makeup before the party started, which always made me really excited because I never really put any work into my physical appearance. Well, little did I know, the only reason why she would offer to do my hair and makeup at these parties was so that way she could make me look like shit in front of all the boys. So after that, I taught myself how to do my own makeup and do my own hair, like for part two. Part two about why I beat up my best friend. So like I said, I learned how to do my hair and makeup and she went on vacation for like a month straight. Well, when she came home, she threw another party and she was like, don't worry, after I'm done getting ready, I'll do your makeup and do your hair. And I was like, no, it's fine. I got it. She literally looks at me and she goes, are you sure? You don't really know how to do that. Like, it'll probably look really bad. And I'm like, why the fuck would you say that? She goes, no, like, I don't mean it to be rude. It's just that like, I want you to look good in front of the boys and stuff like that. Like, sis tried to talk me into getting a shower for a full like 20 minutes. So after that, the whole night, she's literally being a pick-me girl. She's making all these comments about me in front of the boys. And I just keep brushing them off until her next party. We got ready and I put on these expensive shoes that I had just bought. And she goes, wow, you just like really like to copy my style, don't you? So she starts making comments that whole night about how my family's poor and stuff like that. And she threw up all over my shoes. So I dumped the trash can that everybody had threw up in that night on her, punched her in the face. But like two months later, she came to my house and apologized. Story time about how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name. So a little background information. This all happened whenever I was in sixth grade. This all happened on a Tuesday night. So I had school the next day. Well, my dad had went to work earlier in the day. Well, around 10 o'clock at night, we hadn't heard from my dad all day, which was super weird for him because he was always home around 10 o'clock. And even if he wasn't, he still would have kept in contact with us and let us know where he was at. So at this point, my family and I were really scared and we're thinking that something happened to him. I was calling and texting him. My mom was calling and texting him. My whole family was pretty much trying to get a hold of him. Like we had called all the hospitals to see if he was there. We called police stations to see if he might have been in jail or if they had his last name in the system. So nobody had heard or seen from him. So we all went to sleep that night hoping that he would show up in the morning. So the next day after I got home from school, my mom came home from work and she had told me about this phone call that she got. Like for part two two of how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name so like i said my mom had gotten home from work and she told me about this phone call that she got while she was at work so apparently one of her co-workers called her and said hey i think i saw your husband on the news so after that she showed me the news article and i couldn't even believe what i was reading so i guess my dad had been drinking and he went to an auto repair shop and stole a car because i guess the keys were left in the door of the car and what makes this even worse the car that he stole had two guns in the truck and they weren't two pistols these were two big ass guns that were fucking loaded oh wait i forgot something so before this he had been at the strip club and somehow he ended up in pink lingerie guys i cannot make this shit up so he was driving around and he decided to park right in the middle of an intersection and it was literally causing a whole fucking scene there were people with their kids worried as hell so after that a few people called the cops like for part three Part two about how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name. So like I said, my dad parked in the middle of an intersection and people were calling the cops. So when the police arrived, my dad was half passed out in the car. This happened in like the middle of broad day, like there's traffic everywhere. So when they finally get up to the car, my dad is literally slumped in the driver's seat. There was a bottle of whiskey in the door and it was completely empty. When they went to arrest him, he started resisting. He was screaming a bunch of profanities at them and started kicking them, threatening them with guns which made the situation worse because my dad had no clue that there were any guns in the back of the car so that just made the police think that they were his so they take my dad to jail and he has like seven charges against him but we were happy because we knew where he was well the worst part is so the next day when i went to school people were coming up to me asking if that was my dad on the news some people were even making fun of me because of what he did and that's really fucking embarrassing for a 12 year old but it's okay dad i still love you Story time about the toxic boy that I almost started dating. So a little background information. Him and I both met on a set of a movie that we were in. Well, a few days into filming, he asked me out. So of course I said yes. And it was literally the most amazing first date ever. So he asked for a second date and I said yes, of course. And the second date was terrible. He literally just tried to get in my pants the whole time. So then he asked me for a third date. 
and for some reason I said yes, hoping that it was not anything like the second date. And he didn't show up, so I pretty much got stood up. And then he even blocked my number. So a few months go by and I end up moving in with my best friend, about an hour away from where I was living when I met him. Well, the one night she came home and told me that he had messaged her on Instagram, which I thought was funny as hell because my best friend did not swing that way. So she pretends to flirt with him and asks him to come over. So he drives an hour to our apartment and when he walks in, he just sees me standing in the kitchen. He immediately walked out at Story time, my gym teacher's wife found out that he was having an affair with me. So a little background information. I was a sophomore in high school and the one night my friends and I were playing truth or dare. Well, a little bit into the game, my friends dared me to download Tinder and message the first five guys that I saw. And what do you know, the last guy that I saw in there was my gym teacher. So obviously I messaged him and I was like, hey, OMG, it's blah, blah, blah from your third period class. And obviously I wasn't expecting him to answer, but he did. And he was like, oh, this is weird. How are you? So after that, my friends were like, oh, okay, like it's time to delete it. So I pretended that I did. And when they left, I started messaging him more. So we had been messaging that whole week and one thing led to another. Next thing I knew, he was sneaking me out of my house at 2 a.m. And he was like 32, so he wasn't that old. Well, for the next month, we were going to restaurants that were like an hour away. Almost every weekend, he would rent out a hotel for us. Well, the one night, his wife was supposed to be out with some friends. So he invited me over, like, for part two. Part two about how my gym teacher's wife found out that he was having an affair with me. So, like I said, his wife was supposed to be gone the whole night because she was at the bar with her friends and they were supposed to get in a hotel. So he invited me over. So we went swimming in his pool, then we did the nasty. Well, a few hours later, him and I were sitting on the couch watching a movie. And his wife kept calling him. But he just kept ignoring it, saying that she was fine and he didn't want to answer the call and ruin our time together. So we go upstairs, lay down to go to sleep. And it's like 4 a.m. at this point. So I shit you not, literally an hour later, I wake up to his wife carefully shaking me to wake me up. And she goes, honey, come downstairs. I don't want to wake him up. He has work tomorrow. And I'm like, what the actual fuck? So I went downstairs and she's like, sit at the table with me. So we're sitting at the table and she's like, I hope that we can keep this quiet. She was like, my husband's done this before and that she can't have any of her friends knowing or anybody at school because she's a PTA mom. So she offered me money to keep my mouth shut. And then she let me go back upstairs and lay with him. What the fuck? Story time about how my bank might have ruined my chances of going to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So a little background information. In December, I got tickets to Olivia's concert. I thought it would be the perfect Christmas gift for my sister and I to go to California and go to her concert. And I got two floor seats. So I was super excited when I gave her the tickets. We were both like screaming, you know, that we were going to be going to a concert. We had the best seats. Well, knowing that I had the tickets, I hadn't checked on them for a few months. And this concert is on May 20th of 2022. Well, a few days ago, I was going on Ticketmaster to check the tickets. And it said that they had been voided and I had no idea why. So I was frantically trying to figure out what the hell had happened to my tickets. And I didn't want my sister thinking, oh my God, like she really didn't get the tickets. So I was sending emails with Ticketmaster and they said that somebody had filed a dispute. If you don't know what that means, that means somebody was like, hey, that's my money. I'm taking it back. Like for part two. Part two about why I might not be allowed to go to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So like I said, pretty much somebody was like, hey, I want my money back and the tickets were no longer there. Mind you, I was already charged in December and now it's April. So I call my bank and I'm like, hey, like, what the fuck is going on? My money is missing. Um, These people say they don't have it, aka Ticketmaster. And they're like, oh my god, like, we're so sorry. We thought that it was like a fraudulent charge, so we just disputed it. So now, of course, I'm extremely pissed off and upset. So then when they realized they fucked up, they were like, okay, we'll give the money back to them. That's completely fine. And then I called Ticketmaster and I talked to somebody. They said, that's fine. Just let them know at the door that there was a mix up. And I'm like, okay, but they're not just going to believe me. So can you send me an email saying that's what happened? And right after that, they hung up the call. And I've been trying to get a hold of Ticketmaster ever since. And they haven't been answering. So go check your tickets and please tag Ticketmaster. Story time. I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So a little background information. I was 22 and working at Hooters. And I had this one regular who literally came in every single day that I worked. 
I mean, it wasn't really creepy because I did give him my schedule because he tipped really well. But that's besides the point. The one night he asked me out and obviously I knew that he was going to pay for our dinner. So I said yes because I was hungry and I did not want to pay for food. So anyways, I go on this date and I actually end up really liking him just to find out that he is 40 years old. Fast forward a few months, we start dating and he realizes that I still live at home with my mom and dad. So he's like, oh, like, you can move in with me, but first you need to meet my kids. And I, like, thought that his kids were going to be, like, two and three years old. No, when I went over to dinner the one night at their house, there were four kids who were literally all above the age 13. And every single one of the girls gave me a death stare as I sat down in my chair, like for part two. Part two about how I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So like I said, we're all sitting down in the dining room and there's four kids. There's one boy, three girls. The one boy is 14 and all the other girls are 15, 16, and 19. And we're going to call my boyfriend James. James is like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the kitchen and finish cooking. You guys should bond a little bit. So he leaves me alone with these little fucking roaches and they just start firing shots at me. They're like, you're a gold digger, aren't you? Don't worry, my dad will never marry you so you're not gonna get any of his money. So after that, I told James that they need to warm up to me a little bit more before I move in. So for the next month, we would try to plan things with the kids. But anytime that I was gonna be there, every single one of them would be like, we're not going, we hate her. Eventually, James just kind of said fuck it and he asked me to marry him. So I moved in and then a week later we got married. His kids didn't show up to the wedding and James had to go on a work trip. So I was moving some of my stuff into the house from the car and the kids fucking locked me out of the house. This has all been within the span of five months. What should I do? Story time, I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I know you guys are probably thinking, how the fuck didn't you know that you were dating your best friend's brother? And we're going to call my best friend Rima, and we're going to call her brother Alex. So I had met Alex whenever I was in fifth grade. We never hung out outside of school. We were more of just like friends in school. But I only met Rima last year. Also, Alex was a year older than us. Well, one of the art teachers who usually taught the senior class, she just gave birth to her baby, so they decided to mix both of our classes, aka the one that Alex was in. Well, my art teacher decided to pair us all into partners and have us do an art project. So I got paired up with Alex. Fast forward, we end up liking each other, and we start dating. And usually whenever Rima and I hung out, we would always hang out over my house. Because she said her family was annoying. And Alex and I would only hang out during school, like for part two. Part two about how I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So like I said, we always hung out at my house because she never wanted to hang out at hers. But this weekend, her whole family was supposed to be gone. So she wanted to throw a party. And she was like, OMG, you should definitely invite that guy that you like. Now listen, I know you guys think it's weird that she probably didn't even know that I had a boyfriend. Whenever I had talked to people that were best friends with her before... And yes, multiple best friends. This girl went through best friends like she goes through underwear. They had all said to not let her know who you like or who you're dating. Because she would either try to get with them or she would get with them. And if she couldn't get with them, she would just send them nudes out of nowhere. So fast forward, I get to the party. She comes up to me. She's like, I'm so fucking annoyed. My brother's here. And then she was like, oh, did you bring the guy that you like? And I was like, no. And then I walk into the living room and I see my boyfriend. So I go over and I give him a hug and a kiss and Rima starts screaming at me. After that, she told her brother that I bullied her so that way he would break up with me. And he did. Story time about how I found out that my boyfriend was trying to get with another girl on Valentine's Day. Okay, there's a lot that goes into this story time, so let me break it down for you real quick. I was a sophomore and my boyfriend and I had been dating for about four months now. And he was a junior. Well, there was this girl that he was for some reason obsessed with in his Spanish class. She was a freshman. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, well, how did you know he was obsessed with her? Well, he would Snapchat this girl 24-7. Even his friends told me he was obsessed with her. So I talked to him and I told him I was uncomfortable with how much he was talking to this girl. And he said, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'll block her. Now, I didn't ask him to do that, but it made me feel more confident in how he felt about me. Well, Valentine's Day comes around. And we didn't talk all day until he came to pick me up. I wished him a happy Valentine's Day and got left on delivered. So we get to the restaurants and we decide to put our phones at the end of the table so that way we would be more focused on each other. Well, he goes to the bathroom and then I see this name pop up on his phone. Like for part two. Part two. So, like I said, I saw this name on his phone, and there was something special about this name. So, whenever I kept streaks, I would put the word streak, and then an emoji, and then the person's name. 
and he got the idea that instead of keeping her name, he would put it as Streak. So I was like, that's really fucking weird. And at first I was like, what the fuck? So I opened his phone and what do you know, it's from that girl. And she was replying back to a big paragraph that he sent her. And we had school that same day. So at 6.30 in the morning, this girl got a big paragraph from my boyfriend about how she's such a beautiful, amazing girl and that she deserves somebody who's going to take her out and buy her flowers and stuff. And how if she wanted to go out to dinner, let him know. He took an extremely long time in the bathroom, so the waiter came to our table. So I ordered $300 worth of food for myself. So when he came back, I told him that I had to go call my mom, and I left. And he was stuck with a $400 bill. Story time about my worst trip off LSD. So one of the kids in my friend group was about to leave for Arizona. And we would always talk about how we need to trip together before he leaves. And anytime that I would trip off acid, I would go to my one plug. Well, he ran out, so we had to go to somebody else. And I've never tried this kid's stuff before. But I just said, fuck it, YOLO. Which should not have been my motto at the time. But it was. So that night, we're in the car and one of our friends is driving because he's sober, obviously. And before I put the tab on my tongue, I started to get really nervous. And I have never felt like that before I've taken acid. But I kind of just said, fuck it, and I put it on my tongue. So we go pick up two more people that I'm not really close with. So then we make our way over to our other friend's apartment. And I'm kind of feeling it, but not really. But then as soon as we walk into that apartment, I start tripping balls. And you know, everything was going good. But then my dumb ass decided to look in the fucking mirror. And as soon as I look in the mirror, I see myself smile back at me, like for part two. Okay, part two. So like I said, I look in the mirror and I see myself smiling back at me. And that's whenever everything went south so quick. I sat on the bed, tried to pull myself together because I didn't want to make a fucking scene in front of everybody. But then I got caught in this fucking loop. And if you don't know what the loop is, then I'm going to tell you what it is. It's basically where you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then I started looking around at everybody and it looked like their faces were melting. One of my friends got up off his chair, walked to the other side of the room, and I watched him do that. But when I look back over at the fucking chair, he was still sitting there. So I looked at my one friend that was sober, who I was actually really close with, and I think he saw the look in my eye and he was like, do you want to leave now? And I just shook my head. Yeah, like I could not deal with that shit anymore. So we go to his car and then we drive to my boyfriend's house because I could not go home. I would have got crucified. But well, we get in the house and as soon as his mom sees me, she knows that something's wrong. Like for part three. Okay, part three. So like I said, I walked in and she knew that something was wrong with me right away because she was like, oh, I have a letter from your boyfriend. And usually I would run up, grab it, read it really quickly because I would only get like one letter a week. But instead I ran downstairs because her face was fucking melting. So five minutes later, she has to come downstairs and help me get dressed into my pajamas because I forgot how to dress myself. I didn't want to be left alone that night. So my friend stayed in the basement with me. So he went and tried to go to sleep. But he couldn't because I was watching Butterfly Effect for eight hours straight. Like, that was the only thing that could calm me down. But I still don't even know all the freaking words to it, which is weird. Like, he would try to change the video and somehow I end up back to Butterfly Effect. And then he tried to kiss me. So he left the next morning because he had to go to work, which was at like 11 a.m. And I took this tab at 8 p.m. the day before. So I was getting texts like, where are you? You're supposed to be home now. So I had to go home and act normal in front of everybody while I'm still tripping balls. And I also got grounded for coming home late because I could not come home at the right time because I was tripping so hard. And this lasted for about 24 hours. Crazy story time about how my mom kidnapped my sister. So my mom and dad split whenever I was really young. And at this time, they were always in and out of court battling for custody over my sister and I. Well, the one day my dad drives my mom downtown to the courthouse because she didn't have a ride. And before she gets out of the car, she's like, can I give the girls a hug? And my dad was like, yeah, go ahead. Little background information. I was more of a daddy's girl. My sister was more of a mommy's girl, which is probably the reason why she took her. I was sitting by the window. My sister was sitting in the middle seat. So she gives me a hug. Next thing I know, my sister's seatbelt was unbuckled and my mom was running across the street with her in the middle of downtown. Didn't even look for cars. So my dad got out of the car, ran over, grabbed her, picked both of them up and walked over to the sidewalk and my mom was screaming bloody murder. So this guy called the cops and my dad was trying to show them custody papers because he had full custody. But the cop knew my mom so he let her take my sister. We got her back but I didn't see this bitch for like four months. Toxic best friend story time. So I had an off and on friendship with this one girl. In my freshman year, we became friends again. And she had this boyfriend named Nicholas. And they literally fought 24 seven. 
And every time she would fight, she would be like, can you please fix this for me? So she would have me add him on Snapchat, fix it, and then block him. And guys, this literally was happening like five times a week. And then after she asked me to do that the first few times, I realized she started going through my phone. And when I say my phone, I mean my whole motherfucking phone. A bitch was going through my Snapchats, DMs, text messages. And I didn't know how to confront her because that's just weird. So the one day I was getting ready at her house because we were about to go out. And she was like, I'm grounded. Can I use your phone real quick? And I was like, yeah, just let me Snapchat this last person back. And she goes, no, and rips the phone out of my hand. And she starts going through my Snapchat right in front of me. And I had a streak with this kid named Nick. She goes up to me and says, what the fuck is this? Like for part two. 